Hello, Plaid Man here. So I need to do another video on, hi Cyrus, that, that's Cyrus, he's being silly. I need to do another video on uh, Black Mirror. However, I haven't seen the, vi the episode in a minute, so I gotta rewatch it. Anyhow, uh, in the interim, I'm gonna tell you about a book that I just uh, read slash listened to. I don't, you know, I don't know. I feel like there's a rule of thumb on like, oh, well, if you listen to it, it doesn't count. It's not the same as reading. It's not like it's a comic book where you like literally have to read the thing. Matter of fact, one could actually argue you get more out of the Audible because it takes more. So it's a longer time commitment. Anyways, sorry, my dog is being silly. Um, neither here nor there. So the book in question that I'm doing a little Plaid Man rant about is uh, Starship Troopers. And um, I never read this book ever, 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 ever. I didn't even realize it was a book until very recently. For some reason, at least on the, the, the things I subscribe to on YouTube, I've noticed that there is more and more like people talking about it and they're like, this is amazing. And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, okay, well now I really want to rewatch the movie. Hi. Hi, buddy. I really want to rewatch the movie, which I plan on doing, and perhaps I'll do a separate review on that. But frankly, lots of people do reviews on the movie. Instead, I want to do kind of a review on just the book, but also the book two movie, because I felt like there was this transcendent thing and difference between the two. Um, and and I don't have a ton of experience, but I have read Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and I can tell you, in my personal opinion. The Lord of the Ring books are uh, go really good, but the movies are perfect. Like, just absolutely perfect, in my opinion. The best, and will always be the best, uh, rendition of a good book. Whereas The Hobbit, reversely, is The Hobbit is an amazing book, and the three movies for one tiny book is overbloated and lame and not as good. And I'm not trying to give crap. I understand that there's a lot of reasons for it. And frankly, I wish if Hollywood wants to like recreate a thing, it's like, well, just redo The Hobbit. Like, and you can even make it two movies. It doesn't need to be three, but make it really good. And I'd be fine, but whatever. Neither here nor there. Hey, hey, knock it off. Stop eating that. So my dog is just like, oh, hey, let me, let me chew. He wants to chew the, the bench if I'm not paying attention to him or throwing the ball for him. Anyhow, Starship Trooper. Sorry, big. I'll be quicker about this. Uh, everyone's probably already seen the movie. The, the Effectively, the movie is, you know, about the, the, let me, sorry, the book. The book is about this guy who wants to be something and he doesn't know what he's doing, yada, yada, yada. So he's like, ah, oh, you know what, I'll join the armed forces and I'll just do it for a little bit so I can get my citizenship so I can vote and then I can move on with my life. And it's, it, it comes across as the whole, the whole book is written as if it's like his diary. Uh, and I don't mean that like literally, but it, it really comes across as first person perspective. And this was written in like the fifties, I think. Um, so it's an old sci-fi anyhow, he joins and then Shortly following him joining, uh, they have a new enemy, which is the Bugs, this this alien entity, very insectoid-like that they don't really understand, and there's an all lot war. And a lot of it follows what the movie talks about. A lot of it is just kind of very straightforward, like, man joins the military force, and then he does this and he has this thing that happens to him and then he has this thing and it almost feels as if it was just somebody who joined the military force in world war ii talking about his experience except it's in space it's actually kind of a lame book and i don't really know what the point about it other than there's this like very subliminal subtextual thing that talks about a the value in service and doing a thing that you feel is more beneficial to others than just for yourself. Like basically doing something for others than yourself. And I think that's an interesting through line throughout the book. Uh, 
in general, as far as sci-fi goes, I would rate it like a five or a six out of 10. I don't think it's bad. What I find fascinating, and I, this was the whole thing while I was reading it, I was very confused, was I don't know how the writer of the script went from the book to eventually the movie. And I feel like their intention was to kind of make a parody and like, look, we're making fun of this nationalistic pride in military service thing. And then the irony is they tried to do that. They did it successfully, objectively. And then what ended up happening was more and more people now are watching it and they're like, actually, this is an interesting concept and really well done. Well done. Good job. So it like literally backfires. It's like idiocracy with the shoes. I don't know. Idiocracy. The, the, uh, what are they called? Crocs. They're like, what's a stupid thing that totally won't survive? And then it did survive and now people consume it and it's a big company. So the irony is there, I suppose. I don't know. Anyhow, it's worth listening to. Um, there was a fascinating thing in there that uh, as a lover of kind of the old science fiction where there's a, a character that goes by, he just goes by Lieutenant, like everyone just calls him Lieutenant. And it's this small segment, very tiny part of the story. But it, it came out of me because I, I've, I read another book called Final Blackout, which I'll have to check and see if I've done a review on that because I love that. I'll happily do another review on it or do a review on it if I haven't. And there, the whole the whole main character or one. Yeah, the main character of Final Blackout is called the lieutenant. And I was annoyed. I was like, wait a sec. Did he copy? Blah, 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 blah. And whatever, it doesn't really matter. But I just thought it was interesting that the guy who wrote uh, Starship Troopers, whose name is escaping me right now, I'm so sorry. But he he basically borrowed it because he wrote Starship Troopers like 10 years after Final Blackout. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not annoyed now. That's kind of cool. Like, hey, I like this thing, this element of your book, and I'm going to borrow that for a little segment of my book. And it's like, well, well, good, good job, chap. So if nothing else, I think... Starship Troopers is worth a read or a listen. It's relatively short. It's like seven hours. It's nothing like the movie at all. Like the movie is really a separate thing entirely. But it does kind of focus on and do. It's a little bit of like a love letter to service for something greater. Like service for uh, you know, people other than yourself. It's not overdone. It's not ridiculous. But it is worth watching. So that's it for today. Um, I got to watch that episode. Hopefully I'll watch it uh, tonight or, or maybe during lunch tomorrow. Um, and I'll be able to do the, the thing for you. All right. Love you all. Plan out. Bye.